Huge thank you to my nine members on YouTube. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Color correction is very important for your camera. It is the difference of having a camera that looks like this and a camera that looks like this. Tonight, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make LUTs or color lookup tables so you can easily color grade and color correct your footage. Let's go. How's it going, guys? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. My name is Desynchro, and like I said earlier, guys, tonight I'm going to be teaching you all how to color grade and color correct your footage using lookup tables on your OBS. We're also going to be learning how to make our very own color lookup table, and I'm also going to be providing you guys with a few color lookup tables for you to use on your OBS. The lots that I'm going to be providing are going to be available on my Discord channel, so get your cute faces over there, head over to Design Files, and take a look at all the free goodies for you guys to use. This is my little gift to you guys for being absolutely awesome and guys if this video helps in any way consider liking and subscribing to the channel also share it around with your streamer friends so they can learn something new too let's get this started all right so the first thing that you got to do is open up your obs we're using a brand new and clean obs for this but you can use your current obs as well on your sources go over and click the plus button head over to video capture devices and add your webcam Big important step over here, guys. If you are using your OBS and you already have filters on your camera, make sure that you turn off your filters before you do this next part. You need to have your webcam completely clean, no filters, nothing. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to right click and you're going to take a screenshot. Now your screenshot will show where it's saved down here. However, the screenshot is going to be saved in the exact same folder that you have your recordings. So if you go to output and recording, this is where your screenshots are going to be saved. Once you're done with that, open up your editing software of choice. We're going to be using Adobe Photoshop primarily, but this also works with GIMP. And GIMP is completely free for you guys to download. On your Photoshop, the first thing that you want to do is drag your screenshot that you took in. And this is how easy it is to make a lookup table. So you have your screenshot here, no filters applied to it or anything. Go over to your layers, head over to this button over here, click on it and you have all of these adjustments that you can do to your image. If for some reason you can't find the layers panel on your Photoshop, head over to window and then just make sure that layers is ticked. Let's start off with brightness and contrast. So what do we need to do to make this a little bit better? Let's bring up the brightness just a little bit and let's bring up the contrast as well. Next thing I see is that the image is just a little bit too saturated. So let's bring up a vibrance. Bring down the vibrance just a little bit. Actually, let's bring up the vibrance and then bring down the saturation just a tad. And this is the cool thing about it as well. Because we're adding these adjustment layers, we can easily turn them off and on at any point in time. And keep in mind as well, what I'm showing you guys is just how I would do it on mine. Every single camera is different, so you'll probably have to do it differently on yours. The most important tip that I can really give you guys here is that just play around and experiment until you find something that you like. All right, so we hit a result that we really like and we want to use it. This is what we started with and this is what we have now. Now we're going to turn this into a lookup table. We have our adjustment layers and we have our background. First things first, head over to file, head over to export, and then come down to color lookup tables on export. Set the quality to high. You can keep multiple of these formats if you want, but we're only really going to use cube. Give it a name and then click OK. Now it's going to ask where you want to save it. For this, I'm just going to be saving it on my desktop. Awesome. Now we made our lookup table and we also exported it. Let's load it into our OBS. In your OBS, this is how you load up your lookup table on your scene or sources. Right click where you want to apply your LUT on, head over to filters. On effect filters, click the plus and look for apply LUT. Where it says the path, click on browse and simply select the LUT cube that you created. It'll automatically load up the adjustments that you did using your software. And the cool thing about it is, is that you can also turn down the opacity on it. So if you don't want it too intense, you can bring that down. You can even add multiple LUTs if you want, albeit I'm not too sure how that will affect your performance. So just be careful. And speaking of performance, when it comes to exporting your LUT on Photoshop, I highly recommend you stick to high. Don't go to maximum. I tried using maximum and not only did it take such a long time to export, it also kind of lagged my OBS a little bit. It might have been an issue with my computer and it might not happen to you, but just keep it in mind if you do export it as a maximum and you start getting a few performance issues, it could potentially be the reason. And also one more thing to keep in mind is that the adjustments that you do on Photoshop won't always 
always look identical to it when you apply it on OBS. This is something to do with the different color profiles. So if you do import your LUT into your OBS and it looks a little bit different, you can easily just go back to your Photoshop and then just edit it again and then export it one more time after you do your adjustments. Okay, but the synchro, I can't afford Photoshop. How do I do this for free? Well, this is where GIMP comes in. And guys, I know that a lot of us don't really like GIMP, but it's really not that bad. You can do some amazing things with GIMP, and the fact that it's free just makes that a lot better. And the best part about GIMP as well is that it's open source. Open source means that it's made by the community. You have the code available and you can do your own modifications to the source code. You're also going to need a plugin for GIMP called GMIC. It's completely free to download and install as well. Link to both GIMP and GMIC are gonna be on the description. To install GMIC, all you have to do is go to their website, click on download, and then where it says GMIC QT plugin for GIMP, all you gotta do is download the stable EXE installer. And once it's downloaded, all you have to do is double click it, and install it. So the way lookup tables work on GIMP is just a little bit different than they do on Photoshop. So open up your GIMP and then load up the screenshot that you took. Once your screenshot is loaded, come over here to the layers, right click, and then add a new from visible layer. Make sure it's selected. And this is where you're going to do your adjustments. GIMP doesn't have adjustment layers like Photoshop. So what we're doing is we're making a duplicate of our layer and then adding the adjustments to that duplicate. Make sure our layer is selected, go over to colors, and this is where we're going to be doing our adjustments. So I'm gonna increase the exposure just a little bit because it's a little bit too dark in my opinion. Gonna fiddle with the color balance just a little bit because I think it's a little bit too red. And then I'm just gonna mess with the curves just a little bit. Awesome. Once you have what you're looking for, you can see this is the after, this is the before. I'm happy with this. Once you're done doing your adjustments, head over to filters. Go to GMIC QT down here. On the search bar over here, look for LUT. And you want to open CLUT from after and before layers. Click on that. The first time you run this, you should see this warning saying that you need two input layers. Easy fix. Come over to input and output down here. Click on this and change to active and below. The image is going to change to this cube. If this happens, that means you're going the right direction. Over here on the settings, change the output mode to save CLUT as cube. The output resolution, we're gonna go with 64, just like we did on Photoshop. And the output folder is where it's going to be saved. So just select wherever you want. I'm going to make a new folder on my desktop. And here you can give whatever name you want. I'm just gonna call it GIMP. Now, all you have to do is click apply. Click OK, and there you go. Open up your OBS, and same thing as before. Go to filters, click the plus, apply LUT, go over to path, browse, and simply load up the cube file that you created. And there you go. You just made and loaded up your LUT using GIMP as well, completely free. I know not everybody has the money to buy things like Photoshop or Affinity Photo, so I will always do my best to look for a free alternative if I can. But there you go, guys. That's how you can color grade your camera using LUTs. Personally, I feel like this works a lot better than the color correction filters that OBS gives you, but it's personal preference at the end of the day. But hey, at least now you know how to make your very own lookup tables, so if you ever need to use it anywhere else. And like I mentioned before, I'm also going to be providing some of the these lots on the discord as well but thank you everybody so much for watching thank you so much for your time i hope this video was able to help you or a friend of yours in any way shape or form if you have any questions and want to learn more come check us out on twitch i stream monday wednesdays and fridays starting at 4 p.m australia west standard time and i'd love to see you there that's all for this video friends i hope you all have an amazing day and an amazing stream and if you guys want to learn some more cool things and watch some more awesome tutorials then make sure you check out these two videos over here trust me you won't regret it